All right, this is my second daily vlog from Portillo, but I think by the time I post this video, it's gonna become a every other daily vlog. I don't know how daily vloggers do it. Si tardes tanto en editar videos, te tomará cinco años aprender español básico. How does this guy keep embedding negative comments within my actual video? Particularly when every Chilean I've met over the past two years has been totally awesome. I'm here too, bro. And your second vlog is already worse than your first. Anyway. Portillo has 1,240 ski level acres, so that makes it smaller than the largest resort on the east coast of the United States, Killington, at 1,500, and not even close to Palisade Sahu, which has 6,000. So Portillo is small, but it's still larger than a resort like Mont which has 755. Of course, right now, given the lack of snow cover, Portillo seems less than half the size of Tremblant. So I'm going to try and give you a sample of every single slope in this vlog, because there's so little ski right now, you could probably hit each of them multiple times in the day. Okay, we'll start with Plateau, which is obviously right off the Plateau lift. It's a advanced slope, a red slope, which is probably a little bit above a blue slope in the US. And it eventually goes right into Las Lomas, which is a blue slope. So we'll hit two slopes in one shot here. So this is still Plateau. And now down here to the right, we will do it up with Las Lomas. So here's a sample of Las Lomas. Blue, first thing in the morning, not many people want it, and there you go. If you come to Portillo, prepare for the altitude. It's 2,880 meters, which is 9,450 feet. Whenever I go to the Breckenridge Copper Mountain area in Colorado, I stay at Silverthorne, and I have a hard time with the altitude there. That's actually 400 feet lower than here. So even though I did a lot of cardio and prep for this trip, I'm still winded pretty much all the time. So back to David's run, which I did in the first vlog, so I won't spend a lot of time on it right now, but just wanna make sure we get every single slope in starts to get a little bit steeper, right? The sign, this warning sign. Portillo has a lift type that I haven't seen anywhere else in the world. It's called a va et vient. That's French. My French actually comes in handy here in Portillo. It means go and come. And it's basically a pommel lift times five or four. There are places for multiple people. You all ride it together and it's like a slingshot. It also operates like a tram. There are two of them, one at the top, one at the bottom, and they go in opposite directions. Portillo has four va et vient slingshot lifts. Roca Jack, El Caracara, I'm gonna mispronounce it, Viscaches, and the Condor. All four of them give you a little bit extra vertical at the top of another lift. If you're a boarder, it may be a challenge. I know a lot of snowboarders who prefer to avoid T-bars and Pamelis, and this one is beyond that. Now for a black slope off of Viscaches Valle Vien. It's actually the worst snow at Portillo right now. It's not even crust. It's beyond that. It's like windswept ice. There's a reason nobody else was doing it, but I committed to trying to get every slope in for this vlog. The shatter of the ice was really loud. I cannot get enough of when the Laguna del Inca looks like a mirror. Glass just reflecting the mountains. So beautiful. Next is off the Conejo chairlift. Blue slope, very short slope, but it gives you a great view of the lake. And right now the Laguna chairlift is closed, so everybody is coming up to Conejo and they're working it. But I'm gonna take the T-bar to go back to the other side because I'm not a huge fan of this short slope. So this is the transition back to the other side. These are technically some little green slopes to the left of the T-bar here. So if you're a complete beginner, you might wanna spend your time here. Right close to the hotel too. And then there's Lake Run, which is technically outside of the ski area boundary. I'm just going to show you a snippet of it because it's also on National Geographic's 100 Slopes of a Lifetime. And I'm doing a video where I ski some of those slopes, so I'm going to save bulk of the footage for that. It would be a perfect run on a nice powder day for sure. T.O. Bob's is an on-mountain restaurant that is extremely popular because it has a great view of the lake. If you stay for a week like I did, the hotel will give you a pass to get one of your lunches at T.O. Bob's for free. I got the burger. It was not that good. I think it's more about the views that you take in while you're eating here than the actual food. El Caracara is not closed, so let's head over there now and add one more slope to the list. Top of El Caracara, a little narrow passageway here in between some chopped up snow, I guess from a, a cat. Hey, the snow is actually not bad right here. Now it's been a little bit more crusty as you can hear. 
definitely a little bit rocky and crunchy. The reason that's the reason nobody else is here. All right, this is Canarios, which is to the right of the Las Lomas lift. Yankee typical. Suponiendo que el reggaeton es música chilena. This guy. It's a blue slope. That will take you right back down to the base. You can cross over to the left there and get over to some green slopes. But this is a great slope just to practice your turns on. Remember, there are a bunch of slopes I won't be able to show you because it's late July and they still haven't opened. It's the high season. The key takeaway is that Portillo is pricey and choosing the high season may not ensure that you have sufficient snow. Last year, there was no significant snowfall from mid-July to mid-August. Compare that to these screenshots from Portillo's webcam showing perfect snow from July through September in 2020. Sadly, no one could enjoy it then due to COVID. Obviously, the risk of uncertain snowfall is present at every resort throughout the world right now, but it's heightened here because of how expensive Portillo is to stay. All right, so this is La Garuanta, which again, I did yesterday. It never gets old seeing the Guna del Inca as you come down. Totally beautiful. For any beginners who want a nice long green slope, this is Bajada del Tren. It's basically a cat track. It does get a little challenging right here when you make this right turn because it's a little bit steep. So if you're a beginner who's getting a little bit better, that might be a perfect place for you to start getting used to steeper slopes. Then after that, it continues to meander along to the right here. And it's a nice room. Fun slope. If maximum visibility or just being in the sun matter to you, the left side of the trail map is in the sun in the morning. The right side over there is not. So you may want to head to the left side first and land over there for the afternoon. This is Condor, a black slope off of the Condor Valle Vien slingshot lift. You see, it gives you extra vertical, but it's not that much. It is black, it is steep, and it dumps you right into the plateau lift and slope back down to the base. Now for the blue slope called Gaucho. On the right side of the trail map, this is a very short slope.